Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point. This is a podcast based on a blog of the same name because we've got our own television universe to maintain. My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and or checking out the blog at couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For at Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU, exclamation point, is nearly on fire. The 2015-2016 TV season has come to a close, so we hope you've kept score on your favorite shows. We also hope you've been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays, as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays, and as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panelists and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are still being published once per week in many seasons, kind of like The Walking Dead. So subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes or Stitcher Radio to stay on top of brand new episodes. Episodes already published discuss a variety of shows, including, but not limited to, Doctor Who, Downton Abbey, How to Get Away with Murder, Broadchurch, Marvel's Daredevil and Jessica Jones, Once Upon a Time, New Girl, The Vampire Diaries, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and The X-Files from its inception through its revival. We've taken a look back at True Blood, Allie McBeal, Futurama, and Desperate Housewives, and more episodes are in the works, including revisits for Game of Thrones, Orange is the New Black, and Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, plus our DC Television Universe panel will shortly be covering Arrow Seasons 3 and 4 and The Flash Seasons 1 and 2. We're also starting up new panels to discuss shows including Supernatural and American Horror Story, and we'll be taking one of our looks back at the popular, critically acclaimed HBO drama Six Feet Under. What's more, CPU! Exclamation point, is going live! In August and September, we will be live-streaming two of our podcast panels in front of a live studio audience. Stay tuned for the details on that. In the meantime, if you don't hear your show in this podcast format, check out the blog. Fellow panelists and I still write reviews, and we're always seeking new panelists, so if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter, follow us at CPU Podcast, and an email address at CouchPotatoesUnitePodcast at gmail.com. Now we also have Instagram at CouchPotatoesUnite and a Pinterest at CPU Podcast. Of course, you can always subscribe to the blog, our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, or our Stitcher Radio channel and leave comments and reviews. A thumbs up on YouTube or a few handy words on iTunes would help us spread the word, so please consider taking a few seconds to do it. We'd truly appreciate it. Today we're around the water cooler to discuss Season 2B, otherwise known as The Wrath of the Villains Arc, of Gotham, the crime drama based on characters appearing in and published by DC Comics from the Batman franchise, primarily those of James Gordon and Bruce Wayne. The show's second season finale aired on May 23, 2016. Created by Bruno Heller, the series stars Ben McKenzie as the young Jim Gordon long before he became commissioner of Gotham City Police Department. As originally conceived, the series would have served as a straightforward story of Gordon's early days on the Gotham City Police Department force. The idea evolved not only to include the Wayne character, played by David Mazouz, but also to tell the origin stories of several Batman villains, including the Penguin, the Riddler, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Two-Face, the Scarecrow, Mr. Freeze, Hugo Strange, and the Joker. The second half of the second season focused upon the wrath of the villains and the rise of notorious Batman villains Hugo Strange, Mr. Freeze, and Azrael, played by James Frayne, explored the evolution of the Penguin, played by Robin Lord Taylor, and the Riddler, played by Corey Michael Smith, particularly, and witnessed the birth of other villains like Clayface and the reintroduction of reviled character Fish Mooney, played by Jada Pinkett Smith. For now, our committed group of Bat fans, Hillary, Kyle, Jen, and Spencer, have reconvened to dissect, for better or for worse, the second half of Season 2. We're also going to speculate on what Season 3 might look like, as Gotham has been renewed for a third season by the Fox Network. Before we do, I want to take a moment to double-check the panel's temperature. 
After all, as we all know, sometimes a TV show can take turns for the better or the worse in our heads, or can continue its level of awesomeness or lack thereof, depending upon its story evolution. As always, it should be noted that all of our panelists have viewed the entire show to date and will, let's face it, discuss sensitive plot points. So for those of you who are not caught up on Gotham, listen at your own risk, as there may be major spoilers. Welcome back, panel. How are you all today? Good. I'm good. Thanks. Doing well. Awesome. Glad to have you back. I think we are going to have some fireworksy kind of discussion today <laughs> about Gotham Season 2B. But like I said, I'd like to take your temperature. So what I'm going to be doing is reading the Couch Potatoes Unite standard character question. However, I have tweaked it. Not a lot. But I have tweaked some of the bottom choices, and I want to see how your interest in Gotham is nowadays. Are you ready? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. So, are you watching Gotham because you want a more detailed backstory about the Caped Crusader, as you're interested in his childhood and what made him decide to fight crime as Batman, like Bruce Wayne? Are you watching it because you feel enough attention hasn't been paid to supporting characters in the mythology, and you wonder how everyone in Gotham City made the choice of the right or wrong side of the line? Or you're looking for tips on how to fight corruption and crime because you have a high sense of idealism, like Jim Gordon? Are you watching it to learn the backstories of Batman's biggest foes, and or for tips on how to start your next criminal empire, like Oswald Cobblepot slash the Penguin or Edward Nigma slash the Riddler? Are you watching it because you love the backdrop that is Gotham City, even though you know it has its flaws? In fact, you accept those flaws and are more than willing to navigate them if it helps get the job done, like Harvey Bullock. Do you watch it because you're very protective of the legacy of the franchise, particularly the young boy who would be Batman one day, like Alfred Pennyworth? Are you watching it because you like the kids on the show? They make you feel younger, and or you are already young and you don't have many friends because for you it's a bit about surviving like Selena Kyle. Are you watching it even though you think it's a little crazy, even psychotic, like Barbara Keene? Are you watching it because you or your employer needs answers about the truth underlying the Wayne murders, the business of Wayne Enterprises, and or whomever is pulling the strings around Gotham, like Lucius Fox? Are you watching it because you admire the tenets of scientific progress and are driven by your experiments in human evolution, despite your highly compromised ethics, like Dr. Hugo Strange? Now, I don't expect you to pick the next three options. However, I toss them out here for your consideration. You don't watch it because you don't really want to watch it, like Butch Gilzean. You don't watch it because the love of your life is circling the drain and you need a change of scenery, so you moved away from Gotham City during your maturity leave, like Leslie Tompkins. You don't watch it because you think it's corrupt or illegal and a bad influence on the mean streets that you're trying to clean up, like Captain Nathaniel Barnes. Or you don't watch it because you have better things to do, and or because you're dead, and or because you came back to life and can't make sense of anything this show included, like Theo Gallivan slash Azrael, Fish Mooney, Victor Fries slash Mr. Freeze, Bridget slash Firefly, or any of those other would-be villains and reincarnated types. Ooh. And those are your options. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of options. That's a lot. This show just springs forth the options. Yes. Well, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go and say be. Harvey Bullock okay. for me. Because this show does have innumerable flaws. Yes, it yeah. really but does. But I'm willing to accept them because I like the universe that they live in. Fair enough. Welcome back, yeah. Spencer. Thank you. And I would, I would say Bullock, too. There's a lot of flaws, a lot of things to nitpick, especially, I think, in the back half of this season. The first half started very strong, and there's little things like that we will go into. But I'm still, you know, I'm still invested because I love the actors, and I think there are good stories. They just kind of scattershot a bunch of random stories in there, too. All right. Welcome back, Kyle. I am Hillary. I am, again, Kyle's wife and the moderator's sister. <laughs> We're just getting out of right now. <laughs> and I would love to say that I'm a little bit more like Harvey, too, because I do think it has its flaws, but I'm kind of meandering a little bit more on my opinion at this point, and I will go into that more so. I'd still say that I watch it for the villains more than anything else because that's what makes Batman awesome. So I'm going to go with the Penguin Riddler part of it. 
And, you know, depending on the way things go in the future, we might be moving into more of like a cat woman. I'm just trying to survive this kind of thing. We'll see what happens. <laughs> she remains hopeful. <laughs> I remain a little bit hopeful, yes. Welcome back, Hillary. And I probably am a little bit of Harvey Bullock <laughs> as well. But I also am the, you know, Riddler, Nigma, Cobblepot, and all that. I actually didn't like villains until I started watching this. Okay. show and I'm actually beca- starting to become a fan of some of the villains they have on there but and maybe a smidge of Bruce Wayne like mm-hmm. I think before my answer was like all Bruce Wayne I think now it's just I'm, I'm realizing that <laughs> <laughs> not so much <laughs> not so much <laughs> sorry I gotta get out of these gestures when people can't see me <laughs> okay welcome mm-hmm. back Jen yep. and as for me Kylie I am actually the exact same answer as Jen. So that makes us all Harvey Bullock, number one. I'm still, like Hillary and Jen, invested in the villain stories. I'm sure we're going to nitpick (laughs) across the broad spectrum of villains they've introduced, and we'll get into that in a second. But ultimately, especially the Penguin and the Riddler, I still enjoy watching them. And I still, even though I don't think they're doing the character very much service nowadays, I still like the childhood Bruce Wayne that we're getting. And sort of Alfred, but not in the sense that I've written it here. (laughs) I'm protective of the legacy, but not the way they're handling it. (laughs) So, ooh, foreshadowing. Well, welcome back to everybody. So let's get right to it. I actually did a little bit something different. I, as most listeners know, I do send out the talking points, and I basically just gave the panel all the major plot points that happened for this back half of the season because it was both multi layered and complex and a little crazy. And it just seemed to me that we should just launch into it and talk about those things rather I would than say it was specific a little questions. Strange. I tip my hat, sir. (laughs) I'm keeping my hat. hat. (laughs) So let's just launch into it, strange or not. (laughs) What did you think of the wrath of the villains, quote unquote? I thought it was just too all over the place. Like I feel like the writers are just like shotgunning all these plot points, like. Gordon, you know, jailed and out of jail. Same with, like, Penguin in the insane asylum, out of the insane asylum, cured, then he's back to normal. I mean, and then you do that with every other character, and they're each going through, like, eight different stories. They did the same with Nygma, too. He ends yeah. up in yeah. there, somehow decides mm-hmm. that it's a good place for him to be, and then he's almost dead, then he's not, and it's just like, ah. It's almost like a soap opera. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. It, it's soap opera. This guy's died ten times, bringing him back to life, dead. Well, then, right? like, yeah. Bruce decides, oh, I'm going to live on the streets forever. And then, like, an episode later, he's like, I'm back with Alfred. Like, you're going to do that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or then, like, when he, he pushes Catwoman away, and he's like, oh, I can't have her. And then, like, an episode yeah, and a half he's later, he's so... like, I need Catwoman. Yeah. <laughs> like, everything is very back and forth. And I agree with both things that Jen and Kyle just said, that it's kind of soap opera-like, and they're shotgunning everything. I think a big mm-hmm. part of that is from... When they concepted this show, they had a very clear vision of what they wanted to do. It wasn't as received, or wasn't received as well as they had hoped, so they've kind of branched off to do these other things. So their vision that they had is gone, and you've got all these writers throwing different things in, and they want to keep them all happy. So they're just throwing them all together in this hodgepodge of sometimes disastrous results. And I and I can get behind that, too. Like, I understand that. But I would assume as writers that they would know, also, while you're trying to keep your fan base and your viewers happy, that to a degree you still can't just go all willy-nilly. They went from doing one tone to a completely opposite tone, but went overzealous in the opposite tone. That's how I felt. Yeah, it was a little too wacky. Yeah. Well, there were just things that... Granted that when the show was created, they said right out the gate, it's not canon. This is a a a new interpretation. But when you do things so far off canon, and 
your fan base that you're looking for is the people that know canon. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're alienating your audience, and that's not a good way to write TV. Because I was actually all for it myself. Like, I didn't actually have as big of a problem with the first season. I mean, yeah, of course there were flaws there, mm-hmm. and there were boring parts. But I was more behind that, and... I knew it wasn't canon. Like, obviously, the timelines are all screwy. We all know that. Mm -hmm. But the characters are, I mean, they're starting to go a little too far with the characters, and that's more important to me than the other stuff in certain circumstances. I'm going to kind of piggyback on something that Kyle said when he was listing his character, which is the first half of season two started very, very strong. Yeah. That's obvious when we talked about this in our last episode about Gotham, that they made a course correction. The problem is, I think Hillary is nailing it on the head, that they course corrected too far. They've lost sight of not only their original focus, but they've even lost sight of the focus that they began with in the very first half of the season. The first half of the season worked so well because they zeroed in on Penguin and Riddler. They gave them really comprehensive arcs. Some people kind of nitpicked, you know, some of the things they were doing back then. I made allusions to the last time how some people didn't like Nygma's trajectory, for example, and that he lurched into the Riddler role a little bit. But that didn't bother me as long as they kind of followed the the rules they were setting up for themselves. In the second half of the season, it's almost like they either abandoned the rules completely that they started off with, or that they really only know how to take two directions. Like you said, they're either in Arkham or they're not in Arkham. They're in jail or they're not in jail. Bruce loves Selena or he doesn't <laughs> love Selena. I mean, you can't... It's like... It, it just shows really a lack of commitment... I think is a, the right word to use to not only the story, but the change of direction and the fact that they're not mapping it out. It would even be an okay thing if they ignored, I mean, not ignored, someone already mentioned alienating the fan base. I think everybody was on board with the show until this season or this half of the season, despite the fact that there were things that were already different from the canon. Yeah, correct. Yeah. The problem is they're not following their own rules. They did. They set up a thing, a few perimeters and boundaries, and now they've completely gone a wall in a certain direction. Like part of like I think what worked in the first half of this season is like they got Jim and Harvey's relationship down perfect. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it was fun watching each episode, like them two play off each other and you know, interact in this world. And then in this season there's a lot of separating them and like stressing Jim's and dark Jim side. And Jim being angsty again. Yeah, yeah it's, and that, that's one of the big <laughs> mm-hmm. problems with going against canon that I have with this show is Jim Gordon is not what we're seeing at all. No, no. Ever, not even never has no. He's got some rock. Yeah, he, he shouldn't mm-hmm. be the one that's... He wouldn't make these deals with the Penguin. He wouldn't no. have done what happened with Theo Gallivan. None of those things would have happened. Yes, yeah, spoiler, Jim Gordon shoots him, abetted by Penguin. And which that's is just super so, wrong. so far from that character. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things that really has bothered me about this show. Although I'm still invested in it, I'm still going to watch it and keep watching probably right through until it's over and done with. Those things, you really just have to try and separate yourself from the angst that they cause in you because they are deep, deep flaws. Well, and Spencer and I were talking before we started recording the podcast, there are moments, although they seem to be fewer and far between, that they do get things pretty brilliant, whether it, it's canon or not. You right. know, There are moments where you're getting, as Hillary called it in the last episode, the Batman feels and feeling the the sense of the story that they're trying to tell. But in this half of the season, those were so many less moments yeah. of those than there were actual moments where you were like, WTF, comma, writers. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like, an example of that I would use is, like, the, the Mr. Freeze episodes. Like, they changed some important character stuff, but, you know, I was like, okay, this is Gotham, so I'll let it go. And I thought those were actually, you know, two pretty strong episodes. Yeah, they were. But then when he comes back, he's just a goon. So then it feels like the investment you had him in those two episodes was kind of pointless. Because yeah, then he's just a hired gun, not, uh, no personality. They did that. all that brilliant storytelling of him and the angst and trying to save his wife, which is close to canon. Yeah. 
And then they killed his wife. Yeah. It's like, wait, no, she lives in status. Lives. That gives him right. his purpose. That's Without so him, yeah, that's he has just, no purpose. Yeah, like, the thing motivation. that bothered me, but I was like, okay, it's uh. Gotham's version, is that he was killing people while his wife was alive. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, in the comics, he, or and that's the just a simple, he would never do that. That's like, just the whole point is he's thing. still technically a, a good guy until he just feels like he's abandoned alone. Which I was willing to look past that because I was like, okay, well, the actor is pretty good and the, the lady playing his wife was good. But then none of that even really mattered because then, yeah, he just would show up in, like, two other episodes just shooting his ice gun. I don't even think he had any lines. He just, like, shot a bus up and then shot a yeah. Arkham. He was basically a henchman of Hugo Strange. Yeah. Which then brings up another thing, and I'm just going to segue this because I know Kyle's going to jump on it. A lot of the the villains that were created or that arose, if you will, in this half of the season, so apart from Penguin and Riddler and Catwoman, because they had already been around, were created, apparently, or sprung up, or however you want to say, by Hugo Strange. Which, first I want to say that B.D. Wong as Hugo Strange was excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's spot on. Yeah. I mean, of course, he's an excellent actor, but, yeah. They didn't have a good, like, end game for him, like, what his motive was. It was just so all over the place. Especially with, like, him randomly releasing people just, like, for shits and giggles. I love to see what's going to happen. Yeah, like... <laughs> Well, that didn't, that didn't bother me as much, because what they established with Strange, that was pretty clear, was that there were two possible motivations behind his actions. Either one, he had his own idea of scientific progress, and to him, get, Gotham City was like his rat maze, where he basically could release his experiments. But they didn't even follow, because he never followed up on Penguin or Barbara. He, he said he released them to, to watch their progress, but he never but followed up on that. But then the other thing <laughs> was that he was being pulled and puppeted along by this secret society and masks. Of course so, I mean, you could explain yeah. that away. There's, like, an explanation for that. I don't know. I just think it's lame, but... <laughs> <laughs> Which part? But, I, I'm sorry, and then I interrupted what you originally, the point you were originally making is, yeah, like, I did not like that some of these iconic Batman villains are just random crazy people and their identities and their lives apparently never happened. Like, Clayface, like Basil Carlo. I, I love Clayface, and mm-hmm. he's a very underutilized villain. It's a brilliant story, the original story. Yeah. yeah, like, I like the idea of this, you know, actor who's just so desperate and, like, washed up, and I like that. And then to just say, oh, that's a fake memory and this random crazy guy. And same with Azrael, because Azrael's an interesting character, too. Oh, and Azrael was such a integral part of the Batman storylines. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the way in which they did it was, well, it was just awful. Yeah. That, that I think, is one of the biggest disservices of this half of the season. First of all, timeline-wise, is already screwy, because Azrael's not supposed to come out from much later. Yeah, the the breaking of the Batman. Yeah. Yeah, not when Bruce Wayne is a kid, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, the entire creation of him, which was basically strange looking in the order of the St. Dumas book and saying, oh, this is what I'm going to make him, and then telling Galavan, who's all addled, this is what your personality is, and then all of a sudden he can move like Batman. Did that not strike you? Yes. <laughs> I thought that was very bizarre. I know. Kind of like that much. Well, I feel like that was the whole reason they wrote him in. Mm. It was just to give Bruce, like, somebody to copy. Like, because there's a scene where Bruce sees him, like, jumping up the walls with a yes, cape. Yes, I know. And Bruce is just sitting there in awe. I wondered that, because he, he was sitting there in awe, thinking, oh, maybe this is their way of saying this is where he's getting his ideas from, is seeing that. One of the problems I have with the Bruce Wayne arc is that they've given him this inspiration for Batman with Azrael now. They've not... He's now at the point where he's too old to fall through the floor and have the bats come at him yeah. and scare mm-hmm. him. So that's got that's off the table. I mean, when you're 13, 14, 15 years old, it's not going to scare you in the way that's going to leave that Especially mark. Especially after seeing your parents die yeah. and all these other people. <laughs> yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. kind of... They've, they've missed the mark on a lot of the character developments. Again, they said that it wasn't going to be canon, but you're taking this universe that so many people are invested in and love and doing weird things with it. Well, and there are certain iconic moments that they've already borrowed, which then goes back to following their own rules. We yeah, saw the pearls dropping when they shot too. Thomas and Martha. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. Matches Malone is the one that shot Thomas and Martha. All of these things are still the same. So we met David as Bruce 
at about the same age. I know he seems older than he was when he started the first season. I could still buy it if they introduced a f discovery of bats that scared the bejesus out of I think of at this point they would need Scarecrow or some reference to that. Yeah. I mean, to like ingrain in his psyche, because otherwise he's seen way worse things like bats flying in his face. Yeah, it's just taking away from all the believability They're going to have to take a page out of an Arrow and do it as a flashback. Yeah. Mm. They might have to. Yeah, they to. could do that. Even. Even I'm really, still such a cop out, I though. Know. I'm it's sorry. Out, like, it is. Like, have to do it to make it work. Oh, oh, I don't, oh, so we keep pointing out the negative, but I will point out one thing that I loved. And it was just so mostly because I did not like the Azrael. I loved the whole him like acting like this huge badass, and then Butch just blowing him up. It did turn him. It did turn him into that huge punchline, but the punchline was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it did make me laugh. It did make me laugh, but at the same time, it made me cry because it's like, oh, you just destroyed but one of the. Big Characters. characters, but I did love Penguin saying "You're welcome" and then turning <laughs> away. <laughs> thing away. <laughs> so that was good. Yeah. There's your highlight of the season. Yeah, <laughs> one of them is Penguin. Yeah, Robin Lord Taylor, you're still really good. I just wish that they would like focus back on that more. Same with the guy that plays the Riddler. Like he yes. is awesome. I just mm -hmm. wish that they would, you know, stick with his brilliance and stuff and make him more Riddler and less. Yeah. Yes. yes. Like yeah. less yeah. serial killer. Yeah, because yeah. you don't. He's you not just, a serial killer. You just see all. his narcissism, but you don't see like why he's like why he thinks he's smarter than everybody because they, they never like everybody kind of and in the end trumps him. Yeah, and that just shouldn't happen. Yet. Yeah, because like to me, it doesn't bother me again that it's not one hundred percent canon, but. I feel like some of these things are just so simple. There's no reason they have to change it. They're just doing it. Yeah, changing it without purpose. It's just I, stupid. I have to also add to the Mr. Freeze storyline. I was exceptionally disappointed with it because of all the reasons that you said. Mr. Freeze is supposed to be this, you know, intelligent, really conflicted guy yeah. who is in as many ways driven by this purpose as well as trapped by it. Like, he cannot break free from it because he's exposed himself to his own science and then must live that way. And as far as I know, in the comics, he's the one who creates his own suit. He's the one who creates yeah. his own identity. Mm -hmm. He makes his own gun. <laughs> Hugo Strange apparently did all of that on the side. We didn't even get to watch that. He just yeah. appeared. It just happened. And they told us. With a gun. And we were like, yay, <laughs> I awesome. Know. That no. was, I didn't understand Hashtag that Christmas. at all. <laughs> and he's not even my favorite villain, but he's one of the more famous ones so if you do follow batman at all you know that you know yeah, what and it's like is. a great thing because like in the comics like wayne enterprises essentially could have helped him cure his wife but they turn off her life support system and pretty much kick him out on his ass right like he hates bruce wayne and that company like it's a great and it would have just you know you have bruce and everything would have played off great and this they went with a weaker storyline than one like we have all these options with this world and to go with something weaker <laughs> doesn't make sense to me now, the Riddler thing doesn't bother me as much. I know I knew that was going to come up. I know he's killing a lot of people, but <laughs> I at least feel that with the trajectory of that character and with the performance of Corey Michael Smith, they've kept pretty consistent with him. And we did get to see a caper where he did riddles. So I was very excited. <laughs> that was actually that was actually <laughs> that one was of the fun. That was, yeah, that was, was one of the highlights. Yeah. yeah, one of the few highlights. And I imagine that he'll escape Arkham. They always do. So, I mean, we'll see what he has to bring to the table. But I, that doesn't bother me. The Penguin storyline didn't bother me. We got to see Paul Rubens as his dad. That, that, yes, was, that, that was, was, was the highlight of the season, That too. was pretty good. Part of the problem I have with the Riddler storyline is, though, now Lucius and Bruce know that Ed is a bad guy. That's mm -hmm. true. Yes, exactly. So where does it go from there? He's now completely has to be committed to being a bad guy at a much sooner period mm -hmm. in the timeline than he should be. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess he needs to get a purple mask then. <laughs> <laughs> I would be fine if he starts t turning up in green and purple. Sure. That is, <laughs> that's great. And who knows how long they'll keep him in Arkham. Maybe he'll mastermind something. He'll be... But then somebody will complain he's being the Joker. <laughs> so... <laughs> But what else are they going to do? They're already traveling these twisty, turny things, so that wouldn't bother me. They're painting themselves into some corners. In they some are lives. painting themselves. Yeah. 
The fact that Lee lost the baby. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was like, off all y'all were hey, talking off. about. Off screen and left off screen. No. I know. <laughs> so last time we were talking about how Barbara Keen, crazy Barbara, who is awake again. Uh, <laughs> and working why? for the penguin. <laughs> She was supposed to somehow be Batgirl. I think they're off that. But then... The better be off Batgirl. that. What? She's Batgirl's mom, not Batgirl. Yeah. So you know. she could get pregnant and then have that was That was supposed to, was supposed to happen before everybody hated her. But there's like almost no way they can do that. They, they're going to have to find a different Barbara to become I feel James' like, wife. I feel like they're going to write a saying yes! that he didn't have a miscarriage and that's baby Barbara or his uh, son. Oh, it could James have been Gordon a psychotic because yeah. he Because nobody saw trouble. it. She moved before everyone. It's all word of mouth. Good night. All right. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll be hopeful on this But I don't see why they would saying. ever name her Barbara. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I brought up the last Last time, like, why would you? She. And I mean, she's called her crazy bitch numerous times. This season, <laughs> in this half of the season, she leaned over the comatose Barbara and said, "Bitch." <laughs> so, I, I really like Marina Picarin, though. Yeah, I do too. But a lot of that comes from Firefly. Yes, yeah. Firefly. Woo-hoo. But she's also a big comic book nerd herself. Well, like she wants to be in on the Flash. Yeah, well, that's true. And she's also in the Deadpool movie, so she wants. She's she wants to be in. She all also does like voices for a lot of the animated stuff. Yeah. Ex- learn Marvel. It's I not am. bad. Not there. I'm not there yet. Sum it down now. <laughs> Jeez. And, and the M word should not be mentioned when doing a DC podcast. <laughs> That's right. I'm an equal opportunist. Okay. So what else? What else should we talk about? Oh, how did people feel about the random Bruce clone? Yeah. Let's talk yeah. with Winter Soldier hair, so that way you know he's a bad guy. <laughs> Yeah, they copied Marvel. <laughs> My See, that's literal- the thing. You don't want to talk about Marvel, but then they're copying things that have already yeah, happened. Well, we can talk about each other. That. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I was but saying, I'm just saying, in terms of the show, there's a Marvel version. Yeah. Any Marvel character, there's a DC. But in terms version, of the show, matter. they don't have to do that right now. Yeah, it's it, so it was new and very, fresh. Very odd. It they was. don't have to. I just, I don't see where they're going with that. It was a what the what? Yeah. My literal exactly. reaction. My worry. Was, what the shit? Here's my happen. worry. My worry about that is they're they're gonna go two on the nose of the Batman Joker being two sides of the oh. same coin. I'm really worried that that's gonna become the Joker. Oh no! Yeah. No no! I feel like they're they're gonna think that they're clever. No, they do that. No, I, no, I, I to cancel I pray, the show I immediately. He puts on the white makeup if that's the case. No. At least they just don't think your mind. It. Yeah, yeah. Our, our moderator's mind has been blown for a second. There is a vacant look of She's speechless. Curious, that speechless doesn't happen. That would be like a knife to the heart. That could create riots <laughs> of DC fans. That's, I mean, there's not being canon, and then there's totally spitting and stomping well, your essentially at, that point, essentially at that point all they've done is they've, got, they've picked up the wrong comic book yes, and seen Bizarro yeah. from Superman yeah. and thought oh <laughs> No, yeah, that's that. Superman. Yeah, Superman. Superman. <laughs> See, they just don't know what they're doing. Could, they're just, just they're could, not fans of it. Can we just put a petition it, yeah. together and have the writers from Arrow, Flash, Legends and Supergirl take over Gotham and yes, kind of Greg course correct Ramonte, it? Yes, buy the show, please. <laughs> He bought all the other ones. Buy this show, please. Save it. Save I'm like it. nervous. I'm, I'm really nervous. Yeah, that scared me a lot. <laughs> I'll write a nasty letter. <laughs> I might already compose one because Fish is back. Oh, no. Right? Yeah. Well, segue. I thought she was gone for good. <laughs> I did I too. Like, yeah. Oh While no. While she was dead, no. she just got brought back to life. I kind of liked <laughs> the power that they gave her. Yeah, that's that was yeah. kind of it was interesting and cool, but I just can't stand. Yeah. Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith in this role doing this thing that doesn't exist. I can't exist. stand her in general. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. She's not a good actress <laughs> generally. I get that she adds some kind of sass quotient that they must feel is remiss in the show because Catwoman is a baby. So that right was their now. only sassy choice. I like, guess. Like, uh, well, they're recasting Ivy, too. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh! Oh, you cannot yeah. bring all oh, these things up at they're once. Because they, they realize people hated her, and they want to make her more comic book accurate. So they hired, like, an a, a older, sense. sexier lady. So what I'm, at, uh, what I'm predicting will happen here is she will take <laughs> some kind of plant hormone and will suddenly oh, grow they already into a her. sexy they are, they, already, they already said what's going to happen. But what did they say? A, one of the freaks on the bus... Like bites her or something, and she like, she's, oh, yeah, like, she's oh, yeah. a werewolf poison ivy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like the first couple 
whole episodes are going to be her trying to seduce Bruce to steal his money, which I still think is creepy because he's still, like, you know, 14, and this new girl they're hiring is, like, in her 20s. So now... <laughs> but she's... They're <laughs> standing for Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just remember that. <laughs> Oh, what's the <laughs> See, if she had started off like that, I probably wouldn't care. But now that you've chosen that path with the younger crazy girl, you better stick with it and stop changing crap. This is what happens when you leave LSD <laughs> in the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a mess! I understand why they're doing that. Like, it's not it necessary. Makes no sense. Because all the other female characters in the show don't have any sex appeal. Yeah. There well, isn't a single one, so they're looking for a way to make that happen. What was actually but, kind of hopeful but, in this half of the season was that young homeless Ivy, the one that Kyle thought would smell, <laughs> Absolutely. was actually cultivating plants. Like, she was starting to go down the actual road of being poison right, Ivy. Right, starting to go down the road. So I was like, okay, Not I can... jumping into the road. <laughs> well, I know. Why would she lurch forward... In age, in addition to the femme fatale thing, I don't understand. I did wonder with the young girl they had playing her as kind of a hobo, how they were ever going to transform her into that femme fatale that I Plant hormones! Plant hormones! It, it was a stretch. <laughs> There's You're going to need a lot of hormones. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's an explanation that could come out of the comic book. It's true. <laughs> But it's still it so crazy. Sense. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> None of it makes I think sense. that is the big problem with this show. It has its moments of brilliance. It can be very, very entertaining. But if you try and sit down and make sense of yeah. it, you it can't. Yeah. You feel like you're in Arkham Asylum yourself, and for good reason, because nothing's <laughs> making sense. Yeah. That's the thing. Like A lot of times I'll, light, I'll enjoy the episode while I'm watching it, and then like ten minutes later I'll think about to think it. About like, it, wait a minute. Like, like, what, what the hell? Yeah. You've got to switch your brain off to watch this mm-hmm. show. But I, I don't want to do that. And part of that is, like, I still use like, Flash where I can watch it int- intellectually and then pick up on the how best. brilliant it is afterwards. And then I try to do the same with this show and it just... And the lovely weavings of pop culture and everything that The Flash does so well. And this show doesn't even attempt and to do And draws on its actual stories. Well, that's the <laughs> other piece. The the mo- We talked about this the last time, too. And another point I'm going to make, I talked about with Spencer and with Hillary before we recorded. And with Jen, maybe. And Kyle. Maybe I talked about it with all of them. <laughs> the, the first thing is, Gotham has not picked a time period motif. They decided to say, this is, we can't, we're not going to let you guess what time this is. Because yeah, some people you've got are going to cars gonna from the 60s, yeah. but then you've got cell phones. Exactly. And, yeah. It's all over the place. All over the place, which I think they did deliberately, but actually adds to the confusion. Number two... I was talking about the cognitive dissonance of watching Gotham because you're watching things that are taken straight off the comic book pages or the films. You're looking at Arkham Asylum. It's the Arkham Asylum you've always seen. It's done very well. The art direction and cinematography is pretty good. And then crap like what we're talking about happens and your brain's going, no, 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 (laughs) this is not right. I do wonder if what they did when they came up with the concept for this show is they had a contest and they picked the best sixth grade writers in the country (laughs) and said, okay, we want you to deal with the Batman universe, but it can't actually be the Batman universe. Because it's that disjointed. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that just don't mesh. There's so many square pegs and round holes. and Again, it's entertaining, and I enjoy parts of it. But there's just so much that when you sit down in this environment and we start talking about it, what are they doing? (laughs) I would like to point out that I've facepalmed at least five times during this conversation. That's been more than five. <laughs> <laughs> She's basically been holding her entire face in her hands. It like, makes your head hurt. <laughs> it does, especially if you do try to... And, of course, we're a very analytical podcast, so the minute you start to try to analyze it, yeah, you're getting yourself a migraine. Such fantastic <laughs> actors. Very good actors. Mm-hmm. Sometimes completely underused. Yes. You know, adding of Nathaniel Barnes this season I thought was a fantastic... Really good choice. In the first half. In the first half. And then that (laughs) went crazy. Yeah. They don't seem to like to have any kind of rhythm. They don't like consistency. Yeah, as soon as, like, you... It gets set in some ways, and they completely flop everything. Again, they're not following their own rules. 
that they're creating. Or maybe they're just trying to create a sense of anarchy. Or maybe I'm just giving them too much credit. That could be it. <laughs> I mean, that really could be it. It could be a sense of, well, you know, well, you need Gotham the City foot. to become this <laughs> anarchaic mess before Batman can rise up and try to save it. But it doesn't work as a TV show. It doesn't work right. as a TV show because they're... Some of these villains have actual backstories that mm-hmm. they, if Are, they wanted to tweak them, they could tweak them. That's their artistic license. But some of them are so well known. Like, you don't have to be a Batman fan to know some of these origins. But people do. Because it's <laughs> so, so iconic right. in pop mm-hmm. culture. Yeah. Episodal TV needs to have a, a, a common thread. A thread mm-hmm. that runs through your season. Exactly. And this one frayed about episode 7 or 8 and has gone into so many different directions where that common thread is just non-existent. It really is non-existent. Yeah. And now, so let's talk about the end of the season. We already mentioned the Bruce clone. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so Strange gets thrown into prison. They try to blow up Arkham and they defuse the bomb by pouring water on it. So that apparently works. <laughs> that is the dumbest thing ever. It's <laughs> like the Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this bomb's gonna blow up and destroy him. Like, Hang on, look at a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> It's like the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Jim drives off to find Lee because, you know, she ran away because Marina went on maternity leave. Penguins passed out by this bus where all of these creations, I'm going to put in quotes, have emerged. Now, there were some cool sights in there. What were there? There were glimpses. Oh, there were glimpses. You could make them out. <laughs> yeah, one of them was Killer Croc. Yeah, Killer Croc. Oh yeah, that, was, oh, that yeah. one. I was like, oh, yeah. that could be good. And yeah. then I remembered who's writing the show. And went, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's just another person creating. See, they're like just strange. Yeah, yeah, okay. they're just throwing people in there. Yeah. Constantly. Killer Croc, I could sort of buy as a creation because yeah, out of all of them, out like, of yeah, all, yeah, of, them all of them, that sense. works. And that, you're, you're right, but they, they've the taken all of the villains and made one person the creator <laughs> exactly. of all the villains. That's mm-hmm. ludicrous. Yeah, and also the person who took the hit out on the Waynes. Yeah, because, sorry, I derailed your thought. No, that's fine because <laughs> we'll talk about it. Penguin is passed out there. They all come out. Fish is apparently fish. River Gosh. is in Arkham still. <laughs> Because he got himself all captured again when he was like, Yes, I'm out! Which was also very Looney Tunes. <laughs> Bruce is all ready to He's find out who's... I know! <laughs> a little bit! I'm like, what the hell? Not even exaggerating. Bruce is going to try to figure out who's pulling the strings behind all of this mess. Those people in the masks. Whoever the think... Owls. Who? The Court of Owls. Owls. They're a newer Batman villain group. Oh. But they're really, really big in the comics. Okay, yeah, I don't, I've never heard of that. And then, <laughs> blowing up Azrael, oh, I can't even, ha- I can't even. It was it. one of the best moments in the season, but one of the worst at the decision. same time. Decision, because, it's a bad decision. Ha- does that mean Azrael's dead forever? No, he'll probably come back because they don't care. With a different identity he'll just, it'll come, the well, character will come back. There's little bits of DNA like, all over outside right. the, the, the house there, so That's someone will just pick up a little lump of them and clone yeah. them. But still, it's just dumb. And did you see Jerome, <laughs> the Joker, <laughs> yeah, not Joker, out. in one of the tubes? Yes. Yeah. There was a flash of him um, as well. Well, and when you see the blurring of the people off the... Uh, He's one of them. You hear a laugh and you see red hair. Oh, I I honestly don't mind that because he was so good in the first half of the season. Yeah. So I'm glad that I was actually that was the disappointment in two A was that they killed that that character off. I'm like, no, he was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. So you know, bringing him back might be a good thing. I yeah, as long as he's not really the Joker, I'm still <laughs> having a problem. Yeah, I would rather him be the Joker than the Bruce clone. Yes, That's yes. True. I, 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 now that you bring up that theory, and also I would rather him be the Joker than him be the Joker be another Hugo Strange creation yeah. TM. <laughs> Well, but he died and is all in the reanimation tube. But he was strange. already pretty much the Joker before he died. And, you know, the character had been built before he got to Hugo Strange. So the, there wouldn't be a drastic change in the character, you would hope. Just maybe the, the makeup and things. These writers will say there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do, we, what do we hope to see or what do we have? What Any possible questions do you have? going forward based on these events. I have a question to the writers personally. Do you know how to write a clear path on pretty much anything? 
<laughs> and maybe they're changing writers every week. That's what I'm wondering. Oh, that feels, might that, be. That's probably why it feels disjointed because okay. you don't have like one creative well, voice. So then it's the executives, right? It would so fall on them, yeah. Stop it. Something needs to change because they have a good property here. It's just being executed most of the time poorly. While it is entertaining, not having that common thread and that, you know, we, we have the start where Bruce's parents are killed and we have the end where he becomes Batman. It's not a, a massive zigzag twisty road to get from point A to point B. And that's the route that they've decided to take. It doesn't work. Yeah. They need okay. to try and straighten that out a little bit. Can they straighten it out? Is it too late? Like, they've just gone so far off. And They're going to start to lose people, I know. Yeah, because, I mean, a lot of people are hanging on to it, like we all are, because we're obviously huge Batman fans, all of us, in various ways. But there are other people who might not be as apologetic just because they're hoping to see the Batman characters themselves play out. <laughs> so they might just start to be like, eh, whatever. Because there's other comic book things that you can go to now. It's not just, you know, you have other options in the world. On so. the CW. Yes! <laughs> in the DC universe. So, you yes. don't, I mean, if it gets too crazy, I mean, I'll still watch season three too, but depending on where it goes, that's where I'm start, going to start to be like Selena and just wondering if I'm just surviving this out. Season three is going to be the make or break for this show. Yeah. Yes. They're either going to yeah, get it right or they're going to lose audience enough where it's going to get cancelled by the end of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree with that. I also have the same fear Jen does, you know, have they gone too far off the reservation? Because at this point, it's it's one thing to be upset with the changes they've made, but like I said, like I said to start this off, you know, they've set they set up some rules or we thought they set up some rules. It's the fact that they're not following their own rules. So if you're gonna make this, for example, all this brainchild of Hugo Strange slash Miss Peabody we'll talk about her, I haven't mentioned her yet <laughs> slash this Court of Owls situation, then I hope they would take that as a starting point and try to marry it somehow to what we already know because I don't know where they could go and have it be as satisfying. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, that's the worry is how do they get on track to the point where it appeases some of these doubts well yeah like I, I and i'm willing to accept things if they just had a, a just a good story mm -hmm. and that hasn't happened it's all about the suspension of anyway. disbelief yeah. which is why everybody's being over analytical yeah, about the much. source material you have to tell a good story to suspend disbelief Otherwise, then you start thinking about all the things they're getting wrong. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, it's, it's supposed to be the good distraction. And, and, and in some moments. ways, it's that whole, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Right. Yeah. And these stories weren't broken, so why have you drifted so far away from the inspiration for the stories? Yeah. That's a very good point, because I feel like, and I might be talking a little out of turn, you know, Batman's got so many decades of story and pop culture expansion behind it. Whereas something like the Green Arrow was flourishing in the comics, he appeared on Smallville, and now he's got this story over here, which may or may not be comic book accurate, but is telling the story well. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Most yeah. of the time, Most yeah. Of the there time. were blips, probably. Season yeah. three. We'll, <laughs> we'll get to that in our next episode. <laughs> 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 but at least, you know, in many ways they didn't have as much to draw on and not mi as many people know that property. So there were licenses they could take, whether they took them well or not. You know? right. Whereas this is just, Batman is just not the same. It's not equivalent. Batman is huge. how many, huge, has had many TV treatments, cartoon treatments, film treatments. Even if you don't read the comic books, which all of us have at least read some of the comic books. So that becomes the thing that we need to remind the writers. So here's my next question, and I actually <laughs> asked this in my talking points, and Hillary kind of already did it. But if you could talk to the creators of Gotham, since we're at such a critical point, what would you say? Get your shit together. <laughs> Jen! <laughs> right up the gate! <laughs> yeah! Get one or two points and stick with it. Don't go all crazy and... Off tangent. I would instruct them in a way. I would give them probably a dozen different comics throughout the last 20 years of Batman and say, 
try and fit within this framework a little more. Mm -hmm. If you haven't read these, you have no business writing these characters. Exactly. They should have you a have to them. have... Do your research. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you're not an abject lover of the source material, you still need to be within side mm -hmm. it to a point. I don't mind blurring the lines a little bit, but erasing them and then drawing a picture with crayon from another universe altogether is just not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Spencer has colorful <laughs> I would pretty much tell them <laughs> just pretty much keep the characters straight. Like, don't, don't have them waver all over the place. Like, they should have a, a, a core of who they are. It shouldn't just go, like, all over the place. They should have an inner compass and stick to that. Like, Bruce should be training to be Batman. Mm -hmm. Like, hardcore. Like, none of these little distractions. Like, that That should be his focus. He's getting old. You know, he already should have started. Gordon should, you know, just be the straight arrow cop trying to clean up the city with while well, all this crazy stuff's happening. And it should start to avalanche on him, and that should be why he wants Batman. He might be getting there now, because when he's they still not even a cop, he left. He's not, yeah, I it's know. not the, right. The problem there is Stop that trying to make apologies. They, they've made Gordon... <laughs> I'm just saying he might be. I didn't say he is. But they've made Gordon Bullock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! Exactly. And that doesn't... That, that's, I didn't even that's why think Bullock about is it there, like, yeah. so that Gordon... Yeah, I didn't even think about yeah. it. And by the end of the season, <laughs> Bullock is the one he's in charge. Yeah, yes. and like, I have to deal with all these press and, I and like all these Harvey stuff. I like Harvey Bullock. Oh, I do. Donald Logue is fantastic. Yeah, he He's is. He's one of the real highlights for the show. He really mm -hmm. is. I would but also tell the writers they need to include Roman Sionis <laughs> and Tommy Elliot now before Bruce is too old. They're the only villains that grow up with him and that make the most sense in this entire show. Rather than the characters who shouldn't come again? in until later. Uh -huh. Oh, Ooh. Hush, okay. and then the real Black Mask. They had an episode with Roman Sionis' father as Black Mask, but... He, and they're both his best friend. I use uh, growing up because they they both hate him the entire time, but they're two faced to him. It's kind of strange to me that Bruce seems to have zero friends mm -hmm. other than Selena yeah. and Alfred. Alfred. Now Alfred is good. Yeah, he's, he's one of the, he's probably the only consistent character throughout the entire show. That's kind of true, mm -hmm. and he's a very you know kind of. Badassery, salty Alfred. <laughs> I like. I like I that he can. Too. I like but he's because always... of what they're doing with Bruce. It's good that they gave him an Alfred that can handle himself. Yes, mm -hmm. he's not just a butler. No, apparently he has. SIS well, he's training. very. Yes. <laughs> he's very blunt about telling because usually Alfred kind of waxes on and gives him very speechy advice and things like that. Sometimes he's very blunt with Bruce, and it's kind of funny. <laughs> I like those moments yeah. where he's a bit more of a father. Listen, yeah. you stupid little yeah. girl. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> exactly. He says bloody a lot. <laughs> he does. I have no problem with this. <laughs> Hillary. Yeah, I kind of, everyone pretty much hit on what I already feel. Just kind of get a little bit closer to the characters, straighten yourself out, use the material, do your research. It's really important because everyone wants to like it. We're all trying to hang in there. We really are, legitimately. But, I mean, we'll, yeah, like I said. The actors are great, so pretty much the great. blame is entirely on the writers. It is entirely. Mm -hmm. and that's so true because, honestly... The the one thing that keeps me hanging on is the performances, mm -hmm. because I love Corey Michael Smith so much as Nigma and Robin Lord Taylor as Oswald and David Mazuz as Bruce Wayne, Sean Pertwee as Alfred, and even Ben McKenzie as Jim Gordon. I don't think they're doing him any favors at all. But he's he's a good actor. He's yeah. a good actor. Yeah, the act the acting is not a problem other than Jada Pinkett. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I feel, and the girl who plays Selena too. I forget Cameron Bacon Dover or something like mm -hmm. that. I I still think she's one of the best Catwoman we've ever seen on screen for sure. If well, not the certainly best, certainly better than Halle Berry. I'll tell you. Well, <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying that's the low bar. But I mean, a lot of yeah yeah their their actors are appropriate. The casting director did well. a great job. Yeah, and they're giving. That's what should be happening, is that the performances should be giving the writers the ammunition and fuel they need to write something that right. makes sense. Well, the scripts for these should be more painting by numbers, and what we're getting is Jackson Pollock. <laughs> it just is so... Another call for... <laughs> <laughs> it's just so 
crazy <laughs> disjointed and the source material is not that way. It's not. There's a reason that this source material has been around for, what, 75 years now? Hello. Use it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I remember, because we go, Kyle and I go to Comic-Con a lot and, you know, we've seen a couple of the Gotham people. I went to a panel and... Cameron said that they were going to introduce these characters. Now, when she said it, I was like, oh my gosh, I am so excited to see these people in the universe. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not excited to see these people in the universe. Like, <laughs> it just, it completely has flipped itself. Yeah, it really is just coming down to, there's a difference between artistic license and making your own universe that's quote not canon and like I said before completely spitting on or stepping on the canon and just being you know we're not using the source material at all we're making our own story unfortunately you cannot do that really with a comic book property especially not one as aged as famous as well known mm -hmm. as beloved as Batman mm -hmm. it just can't happen I imagine that the writers for this show going to a Comic-Con need their own security just to keep them safe. <laughs> they probably don't even go. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the writers usually do. I was going to say, if they went Sometimes to a Comic-Con, they, they would learn some Batman mythos. Yeah, that's uh. true. That, that might be like, yeah. <laughs> we, should, we should set up a panel and invite them. <laughs> yeah, you sit in the front row. You sit row. there, you shut up, and you listen to this next hour because you're going to learn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> scolding. You're getting scolded. <laughs> So the consensus from the Couch Potatoes Unite Gotham panel is that y'all need to fix some stuff. <laughs> we Big like time. the show, but it needs to change. It does need to change. Or, And we are, I mean, maybe I am apologizing for it a little, but that's just because it's hope. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just sincere, like, don't destroy one of my most favorite comic book stories ever <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I've decided if I ever win the massive lottery, I'm going to try and buy the DC Universe from Warner Brothers and save it. Wow. That's some big goals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's some big money. I just want to get it away from Warner Brothers because they really are taking one of the best properties and really, it's like they took... Yeah, they're just ruining it. Yeah, look no further than Batman vs. Superman. I know. Oh. There's elements, there's elements of that I really enjoyed, but there's elements of it that, yeah, you just go... Oh, when the boy. negative outweighs the positive, that's when it becomes very difficult. But that I also blame on the director more than I blame on anything yeah, else. They gave him a lot of control. They gave him too much control, but, and he's, he was obviously not a fan of the source material. Same with this show. I mean, they're still in charge, then they shouldn't have done that. They should have done their research and picked somebody who they know were going to do it justice. I would have given it to Kevin Smith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who wrote, he would have writes done comics. Mm -hmm. He yeah. knows. Yeah. And has them. his own, like, business and TV show. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll probably continue to say this on this panel repeatedly, because this is the DC core of Couch Potatoes Unite, and we're all big DC fans. But Warner Brothers and his, whoever, however these deals have been made and with Warner Brothers is not doing the universe any favors. You know, thank God for the diamond on the CW of those four shows. Even if Supergirl is the weakest and The Flash is the strongest, you've see, still I got... A, I think you're going to see a big improvement. In I, yeah, I, I, I hope so. Yeah, now it's so. more under their banner, it's going to... Go way up. And they're going to be able to use again, Flash the actress to be able to is bring really it into good. line and bring it into the her, same but... universe, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. The best episode of Supergirl this year was the one where Flash yeah. showed up. Oh my gosh. It really is just... And they played so well off each other, it was great. I mean, and even though, you know, we joke about DC versus Marvel, well, I'll say it again. Marvel's doing it right. Whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. Yeah. Take a page out of their book, you know? <laughs> Because that the universe there is so well coordinated, I can't even, I can't even, as the kids say. <laughs> so even if you're not a Marvel fan, to start, you can become a Marvel fan very easily because of how they're presenting all of the stories. It's been laid out for you in a clear path. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's well done. <laughs> it really is. You, you couldn't have a clearer path to write from. <laughs> and it's all, yeah, it's all integrated and interesting. So These guys are off in the bushes. <laughs> in the weeds, in the weeds. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say about Gotham to be the wrath of the villains? I mean, I know we don't usually do like the star business on the second time around, but my rating, I think last time was like a four ish, and it's gone down a little bit for certain. <laughs> Whose wrath did we see? Yeah, right. 
Right. At the end of the day, no one's <laughs> no really... One. I mean, not even Hugo Strangers. I mean, he released these things, but didn't really do anything to control them at the time. Yeah. Arguably, Nigma was a little wrathful. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, Nig- Nigma and Penguin were, again, the highlights. Yes, mm-hmm. for such a highfalutin... T- and they, all of the episodes are named Wrath of the Villains, colon, something... There was really no cohesive Wrath of the Villains piece. Like, yeah. Do you even know what words mean? Like... Yeah. yeah. It, it could be, it. we could go back and just say this is Wrath of the Villain, Villains Cluster. <laughs> <laughs> that is not general audience worthy. He censored it. I censored it. That's what they, that's what they do is cluster, exclamation point, and sign, and then asterisk. Picture the hand tag. gesturing and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> they just called it meandering of the villains. Yeah. <laughs> that's, okay. Yes! Or Wrath of the... Oh, shiny! <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> Anything else you want to say about Gotham to be? A sad face emoji? <laughs> <laughs> that is in actual words. <laughs> With words. The good thing about that is, though, it did still invoke reason to discuss it, and we all still have hope. So... They have the opportunity with season three to redeem themselves. As we said, if they don't, it's probably going to be a show that A, we stop watching, and B, will likely be cancelled because people stop watching. I mean, just hopefully in this longer hiatus, they have more time to look back at what everyone is saying and then just take that into account. I mean, and we touched it, but on a positive note, I do still really like all the actors. That's probably what keeps me in the most. Me too. You've got great actors, you've got great sets, you've got really good videography. There's four things needed for a show. <laughs> They've got three of them. You're so close, man! <laughs> just, just bring some writers in and we'll be good. But that's like the most like important part, though. Maybe they do have a hundred monkeys in typewriters. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Are you going to keep watching? I mean, right now, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll watch the first half and then... <laughs> I will finish out the season at the very least. If it's as disjointed as the second half of season two, it will be very tempting to drop. Jen? Yes. <laughs> you sound a little bit grudging. Yes. <laughs> I just, I have a lot of hopes for the show, but I just don't, I, I don't see how they're going to be able to straighten things out. And I don't know, I think they've gone too far. Maybe all of our hope just comes from the source material that we know exists. Yeah, and that's I, think the problem. I think the problem is that the Flash and Arrow exist. If those shows never mm-hmm. existed... <laughs> We'd be like, it's we would, awesome. Yeah, we would probably just be like, watch the Batman, you know, watch Gotham no matter what, just because it would be the only option. But now that we've seen how much more brilliantly they can be done, it, it really detracts. Well, it's like all the original comic book movies back from, you know, earlier decades. You know, at the time, they were amazing because they were the first of its kind and they were still cool in a lot of ways. But now that time has passed and studios have put a lot more... Christopher Reeves still holds up. Well, right. I'm (laughs) just... Do you want me to give examples? Because I'll give examples. I'm just... We all started talking about Key and Batman. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, and even... Well, there's other things, too. But still, like, I... You know... And now that there's so much attention, I mean, you've got competition, so be careful. Better done competition, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, by a long way, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I'm still going to keep watching, and <laughs> since we're all k- going to at least keep watching for this one more season, <laughs> Couch Potatoes Unite will definitely be back to talk about Gotham, and most likely after the first half of season three has gone by, since they do the seasons in half arcs, like other shows do. But for now, what I'd like to do is thank Jen, Spencer, Kyle, and Hillary for joining me again to discuss Gotham Season 2B. As I said in the introduction, we have several more new episodes coming down the pike. It's not just comic book shows around here, but we do do a lot of them. And in fact, DCTU panel, which are the same people, will be reconvening shortly to talk about some of those cool shows on the CW. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the blog, CouchPotatoesUnite.wordpress.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Like us on Instagram and Pinterest. Subscribe to our iTunes and Stitcher Radio channel or our YouTube's channel and stay on top of brand new events and developments. Also, you're not going to want to miss the detailed announcement about our live podcasts, which are coming up very soon, so keep track of that. In the meantime, keep listening, keep watching, stay tuned. Bye-bye.